Hey guys, Brody here with Squids Pressure Washing LLC, Kansas City's highest rated exterior cleaning company and a veteran owned business. Um, also have a DBA called Holiday Heroes now. Um, and this year is the first year installing Christmas lights like the pros. I wanna give you guys a walk through the trailer, some of the lessons learned. Uh, it won't be, it may be a long video, so buckle in, but it probably won't be all inclusive as far as everything but i will try to attach some notes and a link to a forum post so we can chat about it but i'm going to give you guys a quick turnaround and show you some of the things that saved my life saved my butt on um, trying to get this stuff tackled and make some money and i am at my parents house at the moment yeah and i get chinese my mom just brought me a menu for Chinese food. So, I just want beef and broccoli. Okay. That's what I usually get. Fried rice or white rice? Fried rice. Sorry, guys. Um, so, I want to turn the camera around and show you guys a couple of things that saved my butt and was helpful in installing Christmas lights. that first and foremost it is a propane heater designed for hunting for hunting blind that is safe to use in enclosed spaces and it comes so that you can buckle it on the wall it's got a bunch of safety features blah 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 in order to get the propane tank up off the ground i just put it in a steel tub or a galvanized tub um, everything here was just kind of tossed back in the boxes for the last job because I didn't want to deal with it. I was done. So we're going to walk through a couple of other things. The other thing that was really helpful to have, and this is just, again, like a heater, personal preference, luggable loo. And there's some cat litter in there for using the luggable loo. But I want to talk a little bit about the marketing. As far as the Christmas lights go, I set it in the Pressure Washing Resource Association Forum, if I had a chance after this season and seeing what kind of demand there was, if I could only scale one business, Christmas lights or the um, pressure washing business, it would be the Christmas light business for sure because the demand was so high and I was charging anywhere from $4.60, $4.60 to $6 a linear foot and only one guy uh, batted an eye about the price. So we'll take a look at some of this stuff. Oh, there goes the tool bucket. So this, I ordered these magnets and they came way bigger than I thought they were gonna be. I thought I ordered the big ones for the pressure washing company, it was not the case. Ordered three of them. The last one would be the tailgate, which ultimately was okay. So this is the logo for Holiday Heroes. One of these I cut down using a one of those rolling craft cutters on a cutting mat. So I had to spend a little bit of money on that, but I think it was like 18 bucks. So I'll give you a walk down on this. So I only had it open for 25 spots. And if the 25 didn't fill by a certain time, spots would go away. And I just used reflective mailbox things on that to create some demand and I love the logo so much normally I would not put a logo on anything that big but I just loved it so much and I wasn't totally sold on doing Christmas lights that I put it on there got a lot of compliments but this was big enough that I had people go to the website and pay the deposit for even the estimate and I'll explain that in a different video how I um, locked in jobs via estimate or via deposit so the other one just got cut up and puzzle pieced onto the tailgate. But these, those numbers, counting down spaces, was really helpful actually. You'll see here I ordered the light strands on a reel with no bulbs and that's because I only offered 
two colors, white and blue. And that's because I did not want to fuss with uh, ordering a bunch of extra multicolor lights and trying to make sure one corner ended on a red and the other one ended on a red or whatever based on um, finicky customers. So white and blue is all I offered. And this was actually pretty easy. So I'll explain again in another video how to do this quickly. And if you've got two people, one can be threading bulbs and putting clips on while somebody else is on the roof or the ladder. One of the first lessons learned was if you're not comfortable on a roof, which I am, I don't mind a roof, but one was really sketchy and I had to call on some reinforcements, painting company friend, but if you're not comfortable sitting on the edges of roofs to clip lights in, you should probably find some out of season roofers or somebody else to actually do the installation. Because if not, it takes a long time and it's tedious. So, so this is how they come. And I'll show you some of the connections that you can use to um, plug these things together. If I sound like I'm shivering, I am. It's like 30 degrees and I just started the heater. So, but anyway, this is how they come. Uh, and I'll do a separate video on how to actually do the connections, but it's incredibly easy. If you've ever played with Legos, you can do the connections. If you order a super short strand and some connections, you can figure it out in about 15 minutes how to um, run these lights. So it's pretty easy, but you'll need socket cord. You'll need a bunch of clips and the lights come in these bags. I'd suggest you save the bags because you're gonna have a bunch of little spare parts. But these are the clips for putting them on gutters and shingles. These were actually cheapest at Home Depot by a lot, by like 30 or 40%. So um, when they started putting stuff out, I started looking at prices and comparing them with some of the suppliers online. Home Depot had it best for the clips and stuff. They start putting this stuff out now in like October. So it's not terribly difficult to do some research and do some pricing by just stopping by Home Depot or Menards or whatever. Now there are two different kinds of clips that I got because I needed some on the fly. These clips where the light just pops in are substantially better than some of these other general purpose clips and I'll try to find some of those. I tried to get them out of the mix as soon as possible because they were really bad, really bad. So I'll find one of those. And keep your cutoffs, obviously. But these. So you'll see. You have to put the light up and over. Dodge that hook. Clip it in. And hope that everything stays straight. And then there's no room really to turn it. If you got to kind of finagle things on there. So if you're looking at clips. Make sure... The light loads from the front of the clip. And then they just pop on the gutter or on the shingle. Easy day, okay? You'll wanna get a handful of these little aprons. They're 79 cents a piece or $1.19 a piece for holding clips because it's actually easier to start putting clips on your lights before you get up on the ladder or up on the roof. Because once they're on, you don't have to fight with them, you're just installing them from the roof. 99 cent spring clamp. This is to keep all of the lights from falling down the roof and pulling all the rest of the lights down. So if you pull up a little bit of slack, you clip it to a shingle, clip it to a gutter, clip it to an eave, this is a huge help, and you won't have to chase a bunch of lights back down and reinstall them. These are the connections, and that's trash. So, let me show you some of these. This stuff could not be any easier, guys. Like I said, I'll do another video, but that video, it'll probably be no longer than about 10 minutes long to show you guys how to do these, because the wire on the spool and zip cord, which is what it's called for creating the extension cords and 
terminating ends so that you don't have lights all over the place. These and the zip cord are how you do it. Okay. Now on this, the fat plug or the fat side, there's a ribbed side of the wire. And as long as you make sure that the rib side of the wire always on the fat blade side, you should be good to go. Okay. And when you do your first run, let's say 10 or 15 feet, you want to create an extension cord or have a bunch of extension cords so that you can um, test them as you go. Just make sure that you unplug it and a remote outlet actually works really well. You push a button, turns off the outlet. You can add another connector to an end without shocking the bejesus out of yourself. Um, but otherwise, you want to make sure you're testing lights as you go because if you don't, then you have to go back through and figure out which one of these plugs. The wire isn't quite pierced. And let me see if I can show you some of those little teeth. I think you can see that it's not quite focused but those little teeth pierce one side of the wire the back one pierces another side and that's how you create your plugs but these i ordered from wintergreen as well there's another supplier online which i forget the name right now i'll have a bunch of detailed links on um, where i got some of this stuff but the other supplier on amazon was actually less expensive on these gilbert plugs or vampire plugs what they're called and um, I'll try to link all that. Another thing you want is the um, green floral wire. And this stuff is dirt cheap. I think I got this little roll for um, like $1.19 or something. This stuff is something you won't use a lot, but you will inevitably use it on something that's kind of weird and you can't attach a clip to. Where are they? In there. But inevitably, you'll end up using this to attach things to something that's pretty tough or is rounded or squared or something, and you can't get the plastic clips on it. So these are all the male and female termination ends. I am out of the stacking ones. Or not the stacking ones, but no, I'm not. They are... Right here. Okay, these are uh, inline plugs. So if you want to put a drop cord or a drop extension cord in somewhere weird or right in the middle of a run, this is what you want. And these actually get used once or twice per house, depending on where their outlet is. So that you can keep uh, as few of the wire, as little of the wire showing as possible. So these are the inline plugs, and these are from the supplier that I found on Amazon, which I'll link to down in the description. So clips, clips, clips for days. Keep some of the bags for little weird random parts like these. These I ended up needing in a couple spots too. I bought way too many because I only ended up needing uh, maybe five total. But they're adhesive. So in a weird spot, if you're on the roof and you have a handful of these in your pocket, you don't have to worry about running to get the glue gun, which is nice. These are sockets, which I didn't even open the bag. I didn't need them at all. On these, you can actually pop those sockets off with a pair of channel locks if you need to take one or two off for whatever reason. Never had to do that one time. I will show you in the actual video on how to install some of these connections, but that bag never got open one time. So you probably don't need any of these. However, I say that You'll get to a job. You'll need some of these. They're super cheap. Again, I'll put links to everything or the prices. There'll be a super detailed description below. Because once you pop these off of this line, you can't use them again. From what I've seen on other videos. So maybe I'm wrong. But it's probably best to just use a new one anyway as far as the socket goes. And now that I say that, I'm going to contradict myself because these, 
you can just pop this cap back off with a pair of channel locks and reuse these all day long. So the termination ends, the male and female. But you cannot do that with the socket, apparently. I don't know, because I never opened that up. Never had to pop any sockets off. Green electrical tape. So this is really, really good, but what's even better, you're gonna need a roll or two of this. I think it's like three bucks or four bucks a roll. It's a little pricier, but um, you'll need this on occasion to wrap an end that's on a corner of a house. And again, I'll show you guys that in another video. Really easy. You just split the end of one of the wires with your fingers, put a quick wrap on one side and then wrap them both together with this electrical tape and it seals it off. Now, there were a couple times where I had to create another run without putting a plug right in the gutter where the water was gonna be or whatever. And I used, now those, those I am all out of, but I will show you, rather than doing this and doing all kinds of crimp connectors and so on and so forth, um, these other things are low heat solder crimp connectors and you can get green heat shrink tubing so that it's a lot better of a connection and it's actually easier than fighting with the other um, things and trying to tape it over especially once it's on the gutter or the shingle all you need and i'll link to these in the description but all you need is these low heat soldering crimp connectors and you slide a piece of heat shrink tubing over the end and um, use your heat gun to shrink it down and seal the um, and melt the solder works awesome way better than the other crimp connectors I think now the other thing these are too big so I'd like to hear some of your guys comments and or any of your guys ideas or comments down below these are called walnuts these are too big because ultimately that wire is only, I believe, 18 or 16 gauge. These, if you have to create a junction point with a bunch of them and you don't have stacking plugs or whatever, you can just slam a bunch of wires into these and it locks down on its own. You don't have to twist anything. You just put a piece of tape over it or a big piece of heat shrink tubing and seal it off pretty good. So if you guys use those for Christmas light installs, um, let me know because I again these were too big so that's it on that this I opened never even used a single zip tie because I found some other stuff and uh, I found this other thing they're called beaded zip ties you can reuse them they're not well, it's 50-50. If you're up on a ladder, you're on a roof edge, it's about the same to install these as one of the other zip things. It's just this opening is a lot bigger than trying to slide it down into the zip tie connection. Measuring tools, the digital tape measure, regular tape measure, measuring wheel, pitch gauge. So depending on the pitch, I was actually able to charge a little bit more. So hit up your favorite roofer or roofing supply company. Get a bunch of these pitch cages. They'll just give you a bunch. Um, because they probably have 10,000 in the console of their truck. Gloves, 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 gloves. There's a bunch of those around here somewhere. Um, standoffs obviously you need ladders you can't get a, up high and do any work up high without ladders i've got a 32 a 24 one of those little um, giant things that i only use for step ladders because they're pretty sketchy but i use it as a step ladder on most things below eight feet but otherwise standoffs and the reason you want standoff is because if you're working on let's say you're working on the slope of a roof uh, and you can't access the roof because it's too steep this will push you far enough away from the house that you can still safely work 
uh, over your head a little bit or directly in front of you without having to lean, lean backward to get stuff clipped on. Oh. So I didn't do any net lights. I didn't do any trees. I didn't offer it. But I did have one person, my insurance agent, ask for a magnolia tree to be lighted because um, he wanted to gift it to his wife, essentially. What I got was a boat hook, which I cannot find to save my life. I bet it's in here, actually. But I can't find it to save my life, so I'll link it down below. The boat hook threads onto your extension pole and makes installing lights in a tree super easy. $250 job, it took about 45 minutes. So, pretty good. What should I start with here? Of course, you're gonna need wire strippers, okay? So get yourself some wire strippers. Um, also get yourself a, in that box over there, can I zoom? No. That's small electrical parts and little testers and so on and so forth. When you get to a house to do an estimate, throw the tester. They make an outlet tester that shows you that an outlet is live and wired correctly. Plug it in outside to make sure that it's good to go. Because if they don't have power outside and you can't test anything, you're shooting blind. And you need to find out if they run an extension cord from somewhere else. Yada, yada, yada. But one of those little $2 outlet testers works awesome wire strippers this is just another pouch which i actually had when we used to do window cleaning but not anymore these go bad so you want to get a bunch of these for holding clips because they're super thin super cheap they'll wear out they'll tear holes uh, over the last month i went through two of them so 79 cents stock up on them Gloves, gloves, gloves. You're going to want a pair of channel locks for um, taking off end plugs, um, taking off sockets. Um, that's about it. Otherwise, you won't need these for anything. Oh, those are glue sticks. This thing is one of my new favorite tools. And I know it's not super manly to be into arts and crafts. But I use a hot glue gun, you can see it right there, for doing mock-ups, for um, creating templates, um, doing all kinds of stuff. If I'm working on another project, like a welding project or a um, carpentry project, I will use the glue gun and cardboard to build a mock-up so I can get some measurements and check things out. But this battery-powered hot glue gun is one of my new favorite tools. You don't have to worry about a cord. You don't have to worry about anything. The only thing I don't like is there's only one setting. And it works great, though. And I just throw it in a cheap holster if I need to take it up on a ladder. But this works <clears throat> really good around garage doors where you don't have anything to clip anything to. You just put a little dabby dab of hot glue on the back, which is how I noticed a handful of other installers were doing it. And it seems to be the best way so far. If you guys have a better way let me know but this also works really good if one of your lights ends on one of those gutter flashings that sticks up above the gutter that angled piece that 90 degree flat section i had to glue one bulb to that 90 degree flat section because i couldn't clip it to anything and it would and, and leave it level it wouldn't be level if i just clipped it to the top so that works great you want a heat gun which isn't in here because i'm using it on another project I didn't use this once. I thought I might need it. Didn't need the tool belt once. Um, razor knife, extra razors. Here's these beetle wraps, is what they're called. These are by Gardner Bender. Super handy. I don't know that I'll ever use another zip tie ever again, actually. I say that and I probably will. A stapler. This I had to use a couple times where I had to hide a wire dropping off the side of the house. You don't want to get carried away with this because when you go to take lights down, you're just going to use your boat hook on the extension pole, pull one section down, and just pull the whole thing down. 
So if everything's stapled up there, it's going to be way tougher than using the clips. So this I had to use a couple of times just to hide a wire down the side of the house. You need it, unfortunately, unless you're going to hot glue the wire to the side of the house too. And the only way that I know to take the hot glue off something painted without pulling the paint off is when it comes time to uninstall it, use your heat gun to make it soft and then just pop it off with a scraper. If it's up high under an eave, you can't really do that if you want to get it done quickly. So I think I used two staples on one house and one staple on another house. Um, whoops. Extension cord. I took all the other extension cords out because I needed them for a different project. Um, you want a pile of extension cords. Um, you also, headlamps, really nice to have. Uh, since sun goes down just a little bit sooner in the winter, obviously. Um, but otherwise, this was too much space in order to do all the houses I needed to do. And because I only do a very limited number, I don't think, this is actually a hunting trailer. I mean, it's insulated. So I can put a futon in it and hunt and camp out of it. But glamping, um, what else? So headlamp, extension cords. If you guys get one of those big LED stand lights, that would probably be helpful too. There was one job on where I was cutting it really close and um, had a little bit left to do on the roof and lost all my sunlight while I was on the roof. So when I was down on the ground, I was using a headlamp and one of those foldable stand LED lights would have been um, super helpful. Um, what else? Like I said, I'll, I'll create another video about doing these connections. Super easy. Uh, that way you guys can see it and see how it's done. But ultimately, it'll take you 15 minutes to figure it out and you'll be a pro. So the other thing is the, I don't have any more of the um, low heat solder butt connections. Unfortunately, I used the very last one, all the way up to the last one, because I bought a small pack. But um, those work great. I can show you kind of how that works. And um, otherwise, I will try to put a super detailed description on how this works down below. Um, so you guys can add a little bit of money to your pocket because I would scale this business over the pressure washing business uh, in a heartbeat because it was really, really easy for me after expenses in a two week time period to put another $8,000 in my bank account, a buffer for the winter. So why not? Two weeks now, one week to take them down because takedown's way easier. Uh, I also found that tile roofs and gutter guards are the bane of a Christmas light installer's existence. They make very specific clips for um, tile roofs from what I'm gleaning from the interwebs. And if I had to do over again, the most complicated house that I did had um, tile roof and gutter guards. And I would uh, have done that first. I would have scheduled so the most complicated houses got done first and the easier houses were a little bit later, which makes business sense because bigger jobs pay more. Should have taken them. Should have done them first, right? But otherwise, you probably have all this stuff if you're in the service industry. Even as a pressure washer, you probably got a measuring wheel, um, digital tape measure if you're a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, if you've ever wired anything or repaired anything electrical, even simple, you've got a pair of wire strippers. Uh, you can get electrical tape. You can learn how to do butt connections, the low heat solder butt connections in about 30 seconds. But it's super easy work, kind of tedious, but the markup is ridiculous really ridiculous so if you have any questions please let me know uh, and the reason the markup is ridiculous is because nobody wants to get up on the roof or they don't want to spend all day on a ladder 
which they're paying you for their time. Not your time, they're paying you for their time. So charge accordingly. But any questions, any comments, please leave them down below. If you're an experienced Christmas light installer and this video was just totally off base, didn't make any sense whatsoever, please let me know because I'd like to learn. So I welcome any and all criticism. But um, otherwise, this is what um, this is what I've learned for the first full year of first full season of doing this myself. So thanks, guys.